foodies how are you doing welcome to naya sim or sim naya if this is your first time of coming across this channel sweetheart kindly smash that subscribe button and turn your notification so you are notified each time i upload and please give this video a thumb up i appreciate you all so much and i'm saying a very big shout out to every one of you for the support you will shower me here with i am grateful and you all are super sweet so today we'll be talking something very important and it's about a video um going around about obama Obama actually uh, pledged his support to Israel and uh, what is going on in Israel with a lot of lies he kind of uh, he is telling and all that and a lot of people are disappointed a lot of people said that uh, they were actually tricked into voting Obama I mean they voted him because they thought the change like you know having somebody with the same skin tone and uh, seeing that he is uh, a black actually the reality is that some people were not actually voting but a lot of people voted for him because they were expecting something really nice from him and uh one thing i want to tell you is that each time i hear politicians speak all i hear is blah 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 whenever politician speaks i don't hear any other thing and it is all smoke and mirrors i trust i don't trust anyone anymore i am just gonna roll this clip let's get into it this video is dedicated to one of the most swagnificent, prolific, drone striking leaders of the free world. He was able to successfully dupe so many people in being culturally proud of him that we were able to politically ignore the way in which he's been committing war crimes. I'm not speaking colloquially. I'm talking about real war crimes. No analogy, no simile, no metaphor. I'm talking about prohibited acts according to the Geneva Convention in the United Nations and the different people in the international community about when you do these particular actions, it is a war crime. Cruel treatment, torture, taking hostages, intentionally directing attacks against civilian populations. Ooh, collective punishment. Ooh, saying that you're going to direct attack at a building that's dedicated towards religion or education or art or science, you know, like a hospital. All those are war crimes. In this video, I don't got to dig through the archive too much talking about how he was drone striking predominantly Muslim communities. You see what I'm saying? That was committing a whole bunch of war crimes. We're going to get into what he said last week. He said... As I stated earlier in my post, Israel has the right to defend its citizens against such wanton violence. And I fully support President Biden's call for the United States to support our longtime ally in going after Hamas, dismantling its military capabilities and facilitating safe return of hundreds of hostages to their families. Notice. He's not talking about the thousands of Palestinians being held hostage over there in Israel. You see what I'm saying? He's talking about the hundreds of Israelis that's being held hostage by Hamas. You feel me? All hostages matter or no? I forgot, though. America practiced those same type of unjust imprisonment practices in old Guantanamo Bay, where you hold an individual in proximity of being Arab or being Muslim and to being a terrorist. And this means you get to waive their rights. And this means Geneva Convention war stuff. It don't matter to them. Obama went on to say but even as we support Israel, we should also be clear that how Israel prosecutes the fight against Hamas matters. In particular, it matters as President Biden has repeatedly emphasized that Israel's military strategy abides by international law, including those laws that seek to avoid at every extent possible the death or suffering of civilian populations. Upholding these values is important to its own sake because it is morally just and reflects our belief in the in, 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 in inherent value. I'm going to start my over my words right now because I'm thinking, what? What you talking about values and all this, you feel me, when the prime minister of Israel, B.B. Yahu, is saying things like this in reference to Palestinians. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our holy Bible. You know what 1 Samuel 15, 3 said about Amalek? Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all they have. Spare them not, but slay both man, women, infants, suckling ox, sheep, camel, and ass. Everybody. I know what Obama says literally in the next statement. When he's talking about his morals and values, let's get into it. This is an enormously difficult task. War is always tragic. And even the most carefully planned military operations often put civilians at risk. As President Biden noted during his recent visit to Israel, America itself has at times fallen short of our higher values when engaged in war. And even in the aftermath of 9-11, the United States government wasn't interested and heeded the advice of even our allies when it came to steps we take to protect ourselves against Al-Qaeda. 
For y'all in the back, what he's saying right there is even America has committed war crimes and that we don't like listening to our allies and that we trying to tell Satan Yahoo that he shouldn't do this, but he ain't listening to us. Y'all know Obama was the president after Bush, right? So I'm talking about them drone strikes. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's put this in perspective. During the 9-11 attacks, almost 3,000 Americans were unalived. 4.5 billion deaths and counting in the post 9-11 war zones. And this comes from May of 2023. So we see how a little bit of blood being spilled over here makes it where individuals become bloodthirsty and enraged and they wage war against an entire region, population, people. You see what I'm saying? That's why America has so much rationale for what Israel is doing because it's been doing it as well. If you're asking yourself, how could one authorize and help the killing of 4.5 million people and still just sleep next to their beautiful wife and just act like nothing is happening? He going to tell you the rationale in this next part of this old statement about the Israel occupation of Palestine. Now, after the systemic massacre of Israeli citizens, a massacre that evolved, that evokes some of the most darkest memories of persecution against Jewish people, it's understandable that many Israelis... It is understandable that many Israelis have demanded that their government do whatever it takes to root out Hamas and make sure that such attacks never happen again. Just watch this, y'all. Moreover, Hamas military operations are deeply embedded within Gaza, justifying you being able to carpet bomb everything deeply embedded in Gaza because its leadership seems to intentionally hide among civilians, thereby endangering the very people they claim to represent. But still, the world is watching closely as events in the region unfold. And any Israeli military strategy that ignores that human costs could ultimately backfire, already thousands of Palestinians have been killed in the bombing of Gaza, many of children, hundreds, of thousands have been forced from their homes. The Israeli government, so we ain't gonna go over that really. You know what I'm saying? When he says that hundreds and thousands have been forced from their home, he talk about the idea of Israel being able to defend itself and deserving the right to do whatever the citizens told them to do. They don't tell us this part in Western media. 1948, the Nakba. I'm country as hell, I'm saying it wrong. But it refers to the mass displacement and possession of almost a million Palestinians. You feel me? They literally birthed the region or the state known as Israel. You see what I mean? So when they start talking about the idea of individuals being able to defend themselves, has America ever said that Palestine has the right to defend itself from the 1948 explosion, disposing of almost a million Palestinians from their land or almost 20,000 of them were massacred? None? Okay. Words are important. You feel me? Language is, 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 is very telling, right? We acknowledge that any time Hamas is talked about, it's always already referred to as a terrorist group that has no legitimacy or no credibility. You feel me? When the Israeli occupational forces got five times as amount of terrorist acts and terrorist blood on his hands as Hamas could ever dream of. We also recognize that when President Obama talks about Israel having the right to defend and protect itself, they ain't never talking about the Nubka. They ain't never talking about the thousands of offensive attacks that the Israeli government has done to the Palestinian people, both in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. That They ain't talking about people having the right to defend themselves. This man went on to say the Israeli government decision to cut off water, food and electricity to captive civilian population threatens not only to worsen a growing humanitarian crisis, but it could rather harden Palestinian attitudes for generations eroding global support for Israel and play into the hands of Israeli enemies and undermine a long term efforts to achieve peace and stability in the region. When we can acknowledge that before the Belfer Declaration, before the uh, Ottoman Empire and the British and the English, I mean, the American society that's going to put their face in what's going on in that area, Jews and Muslims and Christians was living in harmony and living in peace. We also acknowledge that cutting off food and water and electricity and you acknowledging that it's to the civilian, the captive civilian population, you just acknowledge like two or three war crimes in one sentence. I get it though. You got to stand by your allies. What if President Obama took the same stance as President Jimmy Carter? You see what I'm saying? Jimmy Carter went lost in the South of Zionism. Jimmy Carter stood on the side of humanity. At least in this instance. I hope to accomplish with this book is some move toward that goal. But there's no doubt that within the occupied territories, Palestinian land, that there is a horrendous example of apartheid. The uh, occupation of Palestinian land 
the confiscation of that land that doesn't belong to Israel, the building of settlements on it, the colonization of that land, and then the connection of those isolated but multiple settlements, more than 200 of them, with each other by highways, on which Palestinians can't travel, and quite often where Palestinians cannot even cross. <clears throat> so the persecution of the Palestinians now under the occupying territories is you know, under the occupation forces is one of the worst examples of human rights deprivation that I know. And uh, I think even, it's... Even worse, though, than a place like Rwanda? Yes, I think, yes. You mean now? Yes. yes, yes, yes I think, think the impression now of the Israelis, of the Palestinians by the Israelis, is worse than a situation in Africa like the oppression of Rwandas and the, and the Civil War. I, I'm not going back. Western countries like the United States, the UK, and France have been back in the Ugandan and Rwandan countries to be able to go invade Congo and steal Colton. You see right there that dude trying to play Jimmy Carter, talking about even what's going on in Africa, as if America ain't got their hand over there. But listen, man. Uh, Free Palestine. Obama, man, you lying. Not only you lying, you so deceptive that you tell the American people to oppose right-wing governments at every turn, but you supporting a right-wing government over there in Israel that's literally terrorizing Palestinian people committing war crimes. But I know, hey, it take, a, it take one to know one. That's the reason why you're standing behind Satan Yahoo doing what he's doing, what he's saying and saying what he's doing. Education is elevation, man. You, 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 you wild, Obama. You showed us that being a black president is no exception to American imperialism. Amen. As a Pan-African, seeing Obama's support of Israel on Instagram opened an old wound for me. Because before 2011, Libya was able to sustain itself without any foreign help. They were able to achieve economic independence with its own water, its own food, its own oil, its own state-owned bank. It has risen from being one of the poorest countries to being one of the richest countries in Africa. Education and medical treatment was free. And owning a home was considered a human Right. And Gaddafi was able to come up with a, an irrigation system where they were able to harvest water from the desert, a system to get water from the desert and supply it in coastal areas and also in cities. And that country became sustainable. They had everything. I forgot to tell you guys something. Gaddafi was trying to implement the same irrigation system to every other country in Africa. And ding, ding, here comes Obama, the African son bombing the irrigation system in Libya and wreaking havoc. Because you bomb the irrigation system, cut the supply of water, no food. Everything goes to hell. Now, according to Hillary Clinton's emails that were leaked, Gaddafi's government owned 143 tons of gold and also 143 tons of silver that amounted to more than $7 billion that Gaddafi was trying to use to establish our own Pan-African currencies. And that meant that we would have been free from colonial shackles or the influence of the West, permanently. Now, in my eyes, Obama is what we call a house Negro. Historically, there were two types of slaves, the house Negro and the field Negro. Now, the house Negro, he lived in the house next to his master, in the big house, either in the basement or up in the attic. He dressed pretty good. He ate pretty good. What the master left him. He loved his master. I say he loved his master better than the master loved himself. If the master said, we got a nice house here, you say, yeah, boss, we got a nice house here. Master's house caught on fire, the house Negro would be the one who run to put the blaze out. If the master got sick, he said, what's the matter, boss? We sick? We sick. You see, this is the thinking of the house Negro. That's what we call them today because we still got a lot of house running around here. So this is all I got from this video. And first of all, let me say something. You know, Obama actually tricked a lot of people. You know, he has a way, he has a way with words and uh, he tricked a lot of people. And, uh, but I, I think he tricked people that were not observant. Like, you know, when you understand how this politics work and it's easy to trick people when they aren't paying attention. So, I think that people that were not paying attention were tricked or a lot of people were also like, you know, having hope in him and like, you know, he tricked everyone, you know, and uh, America is a business and it is, and its business is war. I don't know if you really understand what I am saying. And uh, they all do it, no matter the color, politics, every president that has took a seat in America, sincerely speaking, has blood on their hands. And that is period. Sometimes 
we think uh, we are going to have like somebody we probably believe in probably because we have the same color or because we share the same thing or we have some certain things in common and we put a lot of hope on them and uh, we are kind of expecting something really great to come out from them and uh, that what we are expecting from them does not happen sometimes we feel uh we feel sad we feel cheated you know but uh life is what it is that's why i keep saying uh some people actually do not want your vote no matter who they are whether we are of the same skin color or skin 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 tone and all that and uh, i now fully understand why like in that why so many around the world freaked when you get uh, when you got the Nobel prize i now i really do understand because some people do not worth it and uh should i say i am disappointed in michelle but uh, i don't have to say i am disappointed because uh, the husband has a, a stand and she has her own stand or maybe they are both all in one place and uh, they are all really silent uh, in everything going on because she knows or they all know better, you know. And him coming out to, you know, give his full support to Israel really says a whole lot. I don't know how to say this, but then during uh, Obama was actually like when he actually uh, campaigned, when he was coming out to be the president of united states sincerely speaking a lot of people never voted and a lot of people were not like willing to vote but uh, a lot of people also voted for him you know because uh they were expecting something really great to come out from him but now i think like all eyes are kind of open and uh, the reality of this country and uh, the reality of uh People that stand with the Westerners and they now we see through their hearts, we know some of them really do not uh, meant well for us. And uh, America is a gang. I don't know how to say this, but that is absolutely the reality of everything. It is a huge gang. And knowing the fact that Obama's vice president, as at the time he was president, was who? So... I keep saying this, the oppressors have so many things in common. They know one another. When they see you from far afar, they know, they recognize you, they recognize themselves. Yeah, so that is just how I feel it is. Politics is just a dirty game. And uh, some people just dive into it and they are completely lost. They do not have soul anymore and... Uh, they do not care about every other people or any or anything that is as long as it is not affecting them it is none of their business because why would somebody invest in money uh, sorry invest in war because it's yielding them money they know they are gonna get something back they pump a lot of money in there they put in a lot of money put in taxpayers money and I keep saying it, the money they pump into this country, that country is a country that has universal basic health. But the people pumping in the money to them do not have that. I think, I don't know how to say it, but America really do need to think well of themselves. And uh, we keep getting tricked. That is just it. And uh, when is it going to ever stop? It may stop it may not stop this is all i have to say i mean drop in what you also got to say see you all in my next video bye for now